At a glance, Chennai looks like any other Indian metro, with towering buildings, IT parks, vehicles whizzing past each other, and lively markets. But every December, her citizens live in fear. The fear of nature's fury that unleashes in the form of relentless rains that literally take over her streets, with floods often bringing the bustling city to a grinding halt. For urban citizens like Bhuvana and Raj, the reality of a climate crisis was now literally at their doorstep. We booked a house in a community close to Old Malibaram Road, IT corridor, back in 2015, just a few months before Chennai, Great Chennai floods. Uh, we thought of keeping the booking because we felt the site, whatever flooding happened, it happened only once in a lifetime event. It's not going to happen again. But having moved to the community the last seven years, we are getting impacted every monsoon. Uh, that is kind of creating a big issue for us and our lifetime investment is getting impacted. Uh, we are feeling quite anxiety every monsoon. For Chennaiites, as the monsoon deluge gets bigger every year, Cars are often replaced with boats on the streets. Not to forget the staggering financial loss. The 2015 floods saw losses of up to 15,000 crores rupees. With time, citizens realized that they could no longer ignore the crisis that was looming over them. While working with the local community volunteers to understand the flood mitigation problems, uh, one thing which came to my realization was that we did not give importance to local ecology. We do not understand the intricacies of the local surroundings. Right after a devastating flood, Raj had a chance encounter with Heritage Inspired, a touring firm that delves into local regions to uncover their cultural history. With recurring floods, they felt it would be apt to look closely at the city's natural heritage as well and help locals get a better understanding of the city's relationship with its coastal ecosystem. As citizens, we had a lot of questions ourselves. You know, 15, 20 years back, uh, we had good monsoons, but uh, we didn't have problems like flooding back then. Uh, so as citizens, we wonder, you know, what has changed from then till now? So at HI, we wanted to address these concerns in the form of a tour by taking experts along with us and uh, getting uh, these questions clarified through experts. Basically, this would involve understanding about our ecosystem, how it functions, what has changed now. So, all of this uh, will be covered on this tour. See, only we have a lot of oxygen is getting depleted. So, almost the water becomes very uh, inorganic. The tour was curated by a group of concerned citizens, history buffs and ecology experts and has till date reached out to thousands of students and working professionals through weekend trails across Chennai's fragile coastal ecosystems. The name of the trail, Naital, is an allusion to the coastal landscape as mentioned in the 2000-year-old Sangam era literature. Today, we join Dr. Babu, a marine biotechnologist on the trail, uncovering how human activities have disputed Chennai's delicate ecosystems. Between the marsh and the swamp, there's a major difference. As we get ready to embark on our trail, the bumpy ride towards it is already an indicator to the degrading marshland that lies ahead, owing to fragmentation. Dr. Babu explains. So now, we, we may think that we are riding or driving on the road, but we are just driving in the, on the marsh, actually. This has been fragmented. You can see on either side, of the road, you can see the marsh. This connectivity has been lost. On the right hand side, you can see the marsh which gets connected to the Buckingham Canal and uh, uh, then to the uh, Bay of Bengal. But here, you can see it is disconnected and you can see a lot of 
tall grown grasses which is typha and this is a indicator species which indicates there is a high organic load along with the water hyacinth so that organic matter is high abdinaka what it infers is there is lot of sewage discharge into the marsh that's why they are flourishing we begin our trail at the eco park a 2.5 acre oasis within chennai's vital freshwater marshland in pallikarnai located just 20 km south of chennai's bustling center this unassuming site plays a vital role in safeguarding the city's future so i i welcome you all and uh, we are in the most important uh, spot of uh, nadal trail and uh, it's very ecologically sensitive uh, habitat and it is a wetland and in wetland there is a there are three kinds of uh, uh, wetlands and that is one is marsh and the other one is swamp and uh, third one is mud flats and what we see here is just less than 10% of its original uh, na volume area uh, in 60s it was uh, having a 15000 acres that is about uh, 6000 hectares now we hardly have uh, 600 uh, uh, na hectares and even this uh, marsh is actually is fragmented whatever you see here it is fragmented this marsh is often considered the kidney of chennai in the past it had the capacity to absorb the overflowing water from the cascading water tanks of over four districts around chennai and slowly drain it into the bay of bengal but now since it is less than 10% the sp the sponge nature of the habitat has reduced drastically and that's why we are facing a lot of inundation so it's not flood uh, swamps la irko quick sand but will it be there in marshy no, areas quick also sand is a place where as you just a few kilometers away from the eco park on our way to the next leg of our trail we encounter the perangudi dumpyard we notice how the marshland on one side has been taken over by what looks like endless mounds of garbage at the dumpyard which is also one of chennai's biggest biomining sites for its legacy waste a clean up operation is underway the greater chennai corporation responsible for the biomining work had claimed that the use of rdf or refuse derived fuel in cement factories has prevented close to 56000 tons of co2 from entering the ecosystem but with the city still struggling to segregate waste at its source there seems to be no easy way out for its waste management leaving the spot of the dump yard and off to another problem area within the city limits we reach the buckingham canal a waterway that winds through shoaling the nallur's it corridor One can see dark sewage water bubbling up even as water hyacinths weave the space eventually reducing its water carrying capacity A man-made freshwater navigation system running across Chennai could be a boon to its people but it struggles to move as it has not been desilted So when you when we saw that the width of the working camp canal in the soaring in Allur it's so wide and it can take up lot of water and can drain it drain it towards the marakanam and uh, discharge it at uh, bay of bengal but the thing is now if you see it has become a shallow just one foot and a depth if we start desilting and uh, widening this uh, bucking camp canal this can be a like express highway this will be the express waterways where it can drain the water at a very short uh, period when we are facing a cloud burst and a very downpour within a short uh, duration with the problems starkly evident from the various ecosystems we visit through the day 
Our day ends in some kind of respite when we reach the expansive salt pans of Nimeli as the last stop for a bit of birding. Raj, an avid birder in the group, tells us about the significance of such open spaces in the city which is in sharp contrast to what came before. So what you see here is a very unique ecosystem called Great Salt Lake. It's a natural blessing for us and this is a huge expanse of land. Uh, this is Salt Lake because there is a sea water coming in and going out through tidal movement. And this huge expanse of land serves as a buffer area whenever there is a storm surge because of cyclone. We take turns to look at the flock of migratory birds that have made this place their temporary home. It reminds us of what could happen when we just let nature take over. In recent years, recurrent floods and increased awareness amongst the general public is creating an impact and has made the Tamil Nadu government sit up and take notice of its coastal ecosystem and waterways. For instance, in Boror, a western suburb of Chennai, approximately 20 kilometers from the city center, consultant urban designer Manushi and her team are tasked with designing the state's government first ever sponge park, a novel initiative that is aimed at mitigating floods in the city. So two years ago when we first arrived on the site, it was completely asphalted and uh, it was used as a car parking lot. There was a water body here which was completely eutrophied. We uh, very quickly went back and did our baseline assessment and analysis and identified that this particular site is a remnant of a wetland and uh, there was a significant opportunity here to revive this back and uh, showcase this as a, a demonstration of how wetlands can be very critical infrastructures. There was a stormwater channel that was carrying a lot of the runoff from the neighborhood university and uh, it was releasing it into the water body. So we kind of build off the elements within this particular site and we try to make sure that this site could behave like a large sponge where we kind of created more room for water within the park. Manushi explains how their designs allows slow movement of water in the land and to prevent its flooding during the monsoons. So, uh, as you can see over here, all these tiny mounds that are graded, uh, this is done so that the capacity of the swale can be enhanced during monsoon. And last monsoon, what we saw is this whole area flooded with water, but it was done in such a way that the water level never breached the boardwalk level. So we've graded it so that the water can kind of delay and slowly infiltrate into the ground and the excess water then moves towards the lake. Therefore, we're reducing the flooding uh, and ensuring that the lake is not getting overwhelmed during the monsoon. It may have taken ravishing floods for Chennai citizens to finally reconnect with her vanishing wetlands. But follow-up actions are promising. Bhuvana's WhatsApp groups is abuzz with activity post-trail, driving collective action on waste management, native afforestation, and even holding authorities accountable for environmental violations. With a newfound grasp of Chennai's ecology, citizens can now challenge unsustainable practices. The state government, on the other hand, has taken up innovative solutions like biomining and sponge parks that could help the city find a balance between its ecological and development needs. The monsoon will soon tell us if we have done enough. Thanks for watching Eco India. If you like the story, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to scroll.in on YouTube.